Hi, I'm Brad DeRoche. Welcome to From the Practice Studio, a series available exclusively here through Strings by Mail. In today's lesson, we're going to look at articulation. For me, articulation can be broken down into four broad categories. The first category would be agogic or time-based articulations, those that affect the decay time of a note. Staccato or legato would be good examples of this. The second category would be dynamic articulations, and those based on volume. So accents would be a good example of this. The third category are relationship-based articulations. So how we affect a group of notes through things such as slurs or glissandi. The fourth category would be timbre or tone-based articulations. So those that affect the pitch or the timbre of a note such as pizzicato or vibrato. So why don't you grab a guitar and join me as we explore articulations on the guitar. Okay, today let's take a look at the first category, agogic accents. Now within agogic accents, I break that down into four different types. Now these are based on the types of articulations that you typically see in pieces of music. For me, the first category would be a note that lasts for its full time value. And we can think of that uh, as tenuto, or again, a note that lasts its full value. We also use the word legato to describe notes that last their full value, but legato might apply more to a series of notes. So if we had three or four notes in a row that were all played for their full time value, might, we might say that that series of notes or group of notes is played legato. But it's really the same thing as tenuto, play for full value. So that's the first uh, type of agogic articulation. The second type would be portato. Portato is perhaps less commonly used in uh, guitar music, but what it essentially means is a slightly shortened note. We could think of it as a note that's worth roughly three quarters of its allotted value, or it sustains for roughly three quarters of its allotted value. And then the last bit of it is stopped, so that there's a clean articulation between each note. The third category would be staccato. Now staccato, would, which is very common uh, in most guitar music, uh, it's either indicated by a little dot above the note or the word staccato. Most of the time people tend to play staccato notes roughly half of their uh, allotted value. So for instance, if we were looking at quarter notes, a staccato note would actually last for only about an eighth note worth of time plus an eighth note worth of rest, okay? And then the last category would be staccatissimo, which are really shortened notes, and perhaps an eighth or even less of its total value, a quarter or an eighth or less of its actual value. Depends probably on the, uh, the actual tempo of the music, how fast the series of notes are going. But what it means is a, a very shortened note, one that lasts for only a fraction of its original value. So let's practice these on the guitar. Now, there's a variety of ways you could do this, but for me, what works best is to use scales. So I like to do just a typical uh, positional scale that I learned many years ago from electric guitar styles, uh, but it works great on, on classical guitar. Now, it doesn't matter what type of scale you play. You don't have to do the same one I'm doing. Um, what I recommend is that you don't worry about learning a new scale today, but instead work on the articulations, okay? So pick a scale that you can already play. Doesn't matter if it's one octave, two octave, major, minor, uh, whatever. Uh, just pick a scale that you're comfortable with already playing and let's try to learn how to articulate it uh, in these four different ways, okay? So I will show you what I am doing in case you wanna follow along. I'm gonna play a G major scale uh, in two and a third octaves and it's again a positional scale and it requires a first finger extension. So. Um, I actually line myself up in fourth position. So my first finger is here on the fourth fret for uh, a position. But when I play the scale, my first finger extends down to the third fret. All right, so anyway, I'll show you how it works here. Uh, this scale would be third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret with fingers one, two, four. Then on the fifth string, same pattern. On the fourth string, the first finger moves back up to its fourth position, so it's no longer extended. Frets are four, five, and seven. On the third string, the frets are only four and five, fingers one and two. Then on the second string, we extend again, first finger goes back down to the third fret, 
fingers one, two, and four again. And on the first string, same thing again. Fingers one, two, and four. Now, these two notes up here are the second and third notes of the scale. You don't really need to include them. They go past the octave, but I usually play them just because they fit within my hand position. Okay, so that's the scale I'm doing, a G major scale. Now, again, you practice whichever one you like. It doesn't. The scale doesn't matter. The articulation concept here in the right hand is what matters most. Okay, so let's take a look at how we could articulate these notes and shorten the decay time of a pitch. So when we first start out to play a note for its full value, what we really need to do is to time the arrival of the right hand and the left hand for the second note. So once we've played the first note, the next note has to be timed perfectly between the two fingers. So if I land too soon with the left hand, it's going to stop the first note from ringing, right? So we can dampen it with that finger, but it's going to not allow it to ring its full value. Likewise, if I put my right hand finger on too soon, it stops the sound. So again, it's timing. Get the timing of the two fingers perfectly together. So the idea is to make sure that you time it so that all the notes land precisely when they need to. So both hands, right and left hand. All right, legato style playing or tenuto for each note lasting for its full value. Now in the beginning for many players, that's really difficult to do. So it needs to be worked on so that you can have a beautiful flowing legato style of playing, which is so necessary in our music. But sometimes we need to articulate the notes and create a clear separation from one note to the next. And a great way to do that is to actually use, I'm just once again using a simple uh, MI alternation in the right hand index middle or middle index. Um, but what I do here, in order to stop a note slightly sooner, I can actually use my right hand as a mute. So I dampen the string, which stops it from ringing. So for instance, if I want to play portato, where a note lasts for roughly three quarters of its allotted time. I could think like this. I'm gonna break a note into four sixteenth notes now. So instead of one each note lasting for a quarter note, I'm gonna think one, two, three, four sixteenth notes, or da, 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 one E and uh, if you would. So da, 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 da. All right, so now I'm breaking each note into four parts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the note and let it ring for three of those parts. And then on the fourth one, I'm actually going to stop the note with my right hand finger. So the next finger is going to come into play. Now I'm going to play with a strict alternation of index and middle finger. So here's how it works. One, two, three, four. So I started with index, for instance. One, two, three, four. And then my middle finger lands on the fourth 16th note stops the note from ringing, but it's also preparing that finger to play the next note. So it works really beautifully. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so what I was doing there was playing a note, letting it ring for three sixteenths, and then putting the next finger on the string to dampen it on the fourth sixteenth and prepare to play the next note. Okay, so it's a, a type of uh, prepared stroke, if you would, uh, gives us nice clean playing. So you could practice that throughout a scale, breaking each one into uh, four parts and then allowing it to ring for three and be muted or resting for one. All right, then next would be staccato style playing. Now staccato style playing would be a note that lasts for roughly half of its allotted value. So instead of a quarter note, it would be like playing an eighth note. So instead of one, two, three, four, we would have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay? Now, staccato notes, when you start playing faster, um, start sounding really nice and clearly separated. It's, it's, a, it's a great sound. But I want to bring in a, one really important concept that I'm doing here in the right hand that I didn't talk about yet. When I get to the last note on a string, and I'm going in an ascending fashion. In order to play the note on the next string, but to also dampen the string, I can't use the same finger because that finger, if I use it to dampen the string, then it has to do a quick leap to get ready to play on the next string. 
All right, it doesn't work so well. So what I do instead is I bring my thumb in to be the, the damper to mute the last note. So just watch as I do this on the very last note, I use the thumb to be the mute and then the next finger can still prepare for the next string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here it comes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, so I brought the thumb in to, to be the mute. One, two, three, four, 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 and so on. And I'm gonna do that with each string. I'll show you in a, an example in just a moment with, with all of the notes here. Okay, then staccatissimo would be a very short note, perhaps as short as possible. Now, ultimately, how much of the time value, the allotted value of a note, a staccatissimo note gets, is probably related to the tempo or how fast you're playing. If you're playing a really rapid series of notes, you'd be lucky to get it even uh, uh, half of the value because it's just too, it's so quick that the notes uh, get played. So. Anyway, staccatissimo is a very short note. We could think about it as one sixteenth in a slow tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. And we need to apply these uh, different types of articulation to our scale. So let's start out with the uh, first one, legato. All right, so with legato style playing, I'm, for this example, I'm gonna use MI alternation or IM alternation and that G major scale pattern that I showed you earlier. And so what I'd like to do here is just play through the scale all the way ascending and descending. Um, you practice it on whatever scale works best for you for right now, but you do need to practice both ascending and descending patterns. It can't be one or the other, it's gotta be both. All right, so let's try that out here. Here's legato or tenuto notes, but a series of them will be legato, very smoothly connected notes. And sorry about the noise in the background. That's my dog snoring. Um, I think he finds this to be very soothing. <laughs> At least I hope he does. <laughs> Here we go. So there's an example of legato style playing. So as smoothly connected as I could, uh, trying to articulate both hands exactly or precisely at the same time. Then next, let's take a look at uh, some of the other ones. Staccato, uh, so we wanna make the notes a little bit shorter. And I do that again by using the right hand as a mute where the next finger lands and it stops the note and also prepares the next finger for playing. So it gives a nice clean articulation between the notes. Sounds very different than legato. So listen to the two side by side. All right, so very different. And staccatissimo would be extremely short in notes. Staccatissimo would be used much more seldomly. So the two that you need to work on the most, I would say would be legato and staccato. Uh, they're the ones that you'll probably apply the most. But all of these different types of articulation need to be worked on because a lot of times when we're practicing things such as scales, we just simply play the notes. Uh, we don't think about articulation. And when we get to play a piece of music, if we haven't practiced that stuff, um, does it just occur the first time when we're playing a piece of music? Uh, I don't think so. For me, articulation needs to be worked out in our technical drills. And when we get really comfortable with it, they are much more apt to use it in a piece of music to make us more expressive as players. And that is the goal, is to become more expressive as performers. And so hopefully this was of some help to you. And I hope that you'll join me next time as we f explore further uh, these different types of articulations. We'll see you next time. Cheers.